this is something that I've been looking at for many, many years. Access management authentication solutions providers, they've been chasing the password killer dream or dragon, if you want to call it that, since further back than multi-factor authentication. Actually, over 30 years ago in the 1990s, my gosh, at every conference I attended, single sign-on was the hot topic, which was kind of like the early version of password killers, right? Because, oh, you only log in once and you never authenticate again. Well, right now, pass keys are once more a hot topic and they have experts on both sides of the discussion at, you know, they're answering the question, is this the password killer solution or is it just another tool and a long list of other tools? And so I guess for my two points I want to make, number one, there are many legacy systems. I think we have to always remember the legacy systems that we're going to have to deal with depending upon how widely we want to implement pass keys. Legacy systems, according to the GAO report, found that on average, 31% of an organization's technology they depend upon are legacy systems. So how are those doing authentication to get into those systems and what are the APIs that are involved. It may not be possible for pass keys to work with those systems or it may be prohibitively expensive to get them so they will. And then number two, new and emerging technologies. And I love the new technologies. I worked with NIST for three years building their IoT product as security and privacy standards. And I AI detect those are being engineered to utilize different types of authentication methods besides passkeys. So typically some types of passwords are being used. Personally, I don't see password uh, pass keys as being the password killers in the foreseeable years, but I do see pass keys expanding greatly in use. So now, which of you wants to jump in on that? I, I agree. And I think especially too, as you start to think about the trend lines, so you kind of outline and say, you know, SSO used to be the thing, right? And that's typically because you know, it sit on your corporate directory, right? And kind of pull in this kind of brings us back into, you got the authentication, but do you have the right authorization into each one of those? And so I think that adds that element in. So now you say, hey, I got my corporate directory, I got SSO, and now I have device management and, and more importantly, that type device identity tying everything in together. And so again, like, I think we'll get really close and I also bet that we're going to be typing in passwords for a while, right? Because even if we have it perfect on the corporate side, which I think is kind of how we have a lot of the mentality around it, again, come back to previous comments on the consumer side, you know, who knows? And you might not want to, right? And so, for example, I'll be ordering Chinese from my favorite restaurant and the way that they do authentication is email, get the code back and come in. But it's like, I probably won't want to spend time doing password lists just to set up on, you know, my low mean order. And, you know, and that might be me, but it comes back into how much implementation versus risk are you willing to implement versus other features that might help drive your product roadmap or some of those other elements. So again, like I think we're going to get really close, but we'll probably still be using a mix of different authentication methods just as we operate in 2024 and beyond. Just to jump on that, I, I think, you know, that that is what's going to be the case. I mean, think about your IT infrastructure you currently own and you currently have in your personal life and you currently use at work. You probably got 50 different passwords, right? Even though you probably own devices that'll do biometric auth, uh, that'll, you know, store certs, you know, in, in any of those other things, right? We can move to this. It's going to be great and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to like the speed at which we can do things, but only on the places that accept it. Um, it's, it's unless we make it easy everywhere and easy every time, it's really going to be something that's an impediment for end users and internal users of organizations alike. We're going to have to have uh, the octas of the world that do things, right? We're going to have to have all of these different solutions that are out there um, for the reasons that we need them. This is just another one that, you know, personally, I think is a better arrow in the quiver, um, but we're still going to have to have all those arrows. Yeah, and Rebecca, when you were talking about, you know, SSO being the hotness and legacy applications, I was at Dartmouth Security and Risk earlier this week and uh, met a friend of mine who was talking about Fortran 
right? And for those of you who don't know that, that's a programming language. And the interesting <laughs> thing is there's no way that you're going to get something Fortran on Big Iron to go run with a passkey. That's just a non-starter. And I think the challenge then becomes knowing what you said about how 31%, I think you said, uh, the OMB report. Anyhow, the, the a lot of business still runs on legacy tech debt. And the challenge that businesses are going to have is not only supporting the new, fashionable, very useful, very um, reduction of risk technologies like passkeys, but also making sure that they have people who are still aware of how does this old stuff all work together? Like we are right now in 2024 dealing with dot dot slash vulnerabilities in VPNs, right? You just end up rubbing your temples. I come from a Unix background from 30 years ago. That was a common exploit back then. You would not think that you'd have that on internet facing infrastructure. And the reason why the developers who inherited maintenance of that product, they didn't know that was a thing, right? And what, when, when pass keys ultimately tip over the horizon and become the new default, the new normal, where we all go, hey, this is a great reduction of risk, make sure we've got actually a way of measuring that we're still defending our legacy tech debt and not introducing these older vulnerabilities. Because I guarantee you, threat actors will rotate into those. Yes. Hey, Drake, you have a couple of thoughts, too. We're getting close to the end here, but I don't want to leave you out. Sure. Well, I think that I think that the password, the the expression the password killer, well, depends on how you take it. No, I mean, are we going to drive passwords to extinction? Uh, no, uh, it's going to be very difficult. There is going to be a lot of side uh, cases and, and needs. But are passkeys going to become uh, the prevalent form of authentication and uh, super and, and and go beyond uh, passwords as the main mean for authentication, especially for consumer services? We are firmly convinced that they will um, more easily in unregulated markets than in regulated markets and more easily in regulated markets than in, um, and than in B2E uh, environments no, on, on corporate uh, to employee. But, uh, but we think that they have a right future for sure. 